Hey y'all, here are OS Reviews. In this video, we're taking a closer look at the Rincon Gen 2 Smart Ring. So about this time last year, we checked out their first generation wearable, and this time around, Gen 2 actually is even slimmer. In fact, it claims to be now one of the world's thinnest and lightest smart rings, while tracking your heart rate, SpO2 blood oxygen, in addition to sleep, automatically 24-7. More specifically, it's about one millimeter thinner in addition to one gram lighter. At first, I didn't think that would make much of a difference, but this thing just takes the cake. It now feels almost indistinguishable compared to a regular ring without any electronics inside. In fact, if you told me it was just a thin piece of metal or plastic, I would probably believe you. So this can be a great alternative to a conventional fitness tracker or a smartwatch if that feels a little bit too intrusive on your wrist as you're sleeping for example, or your skin gets a bit of a rash if you're wearing it for too long. This thing is now almost invisible and probably the most comfortable smart ring that I've tested yet compared to past gens and even some of the competitors like the Ultra Human Ring Air is definitely a bit more bulky. At the same time, it has the longest battery life out of any smart ring currently on the market as well. So it's kind of hard to believe how they were able to accomplish this, particularly if you are looking at just the specs. A smart ring like this only has a 12 milliamp hour capacity battery, yet it's able to go for nearly two weeks before it needs to be recharged again. And the battery case that it comes with is 500 milliamp hours, actually very similar on this part compared to Gen 1. Similar to on true wireless buds, this actually gives you a few additional top-ups, sufficient to last upwards of three months before you have to recharge the battery case again. So it definitely is an endurance champion in the world of smart rings. And that is again compared to the Ultra Human Ring Air, for instance, that doesn't come with a rechargeable battery case, instead it's just a wireless charging dock, with battery life on the ring itself being closer to around 3-4 to four days, which is quite similar to a Mazefit also coming out with their Helio Smart Ring, also has similar battery life of only around 3 days, and also very limited sizes. So out of these current players, I have to say that Ringcon has been doing a pretty good job from a hardware perspective. You can still find it in a variety of different colors, and they all cost the same as well, compared to, say, Aura, cough cough, that charges more for certain colored models, and also, unlike Aura, this thing has the lifetime access to the app for free. There is no subscription involved at all, which is the way it should be, just like on any smartwatch. You simply purchase it up front and you're able to continue to sync and use all the features, versus Aura still requiring a monthly charge just to use the app, which is kind of ridiculous. Granted, the richness of insights in the companion app has been one aspect where Rincon isn't quite as extensive compared to some of their competitors like Ultra Human and Aura, but this is also an aspect they've been trying to improve on in the second gen that we'll touch on more later in this video. Now, as far as the packaging is concerned, before you get the ring, you will first receive a sizing kit, giving you some plastic rings which are molded one-to-one, -one, and you can wear it on your hands to figure out your correct size before confirming your order. And all of the sizes are available, great for both men and women alike. Inside here we have just a quick user guide, plus the charging case, the actual ring, and a USB Type-C cable. The Rincon Gen 2 now has sleep apnea detection as well. This is a feature that Apple just announced as available for their latest gen Apple watches and it's a medical condition that actually close to 20% of the population might be suffering from, but you may not be aware of it. It's a condition where at certain times when you're sleeping, your breathing suddenly stops and can be quite dangerous because as you expect, you can potentially suffocate or suffer from more long-term heart conditions. So this can track that and tell you how severe your sleep apnea is, warning you if it's potentially occurring with up to 91% accuracy through clinical testing and FDA approval is also pending. So this all new sleep apnea metric will not be available in their Gen 1 wearable and is one of the headlining new features this time around. Furthermore, Rincon Gen 2 is now rated to be 50 ATM, aka 100 meters waterproof, which is insane. That's even higher than the five ATMs that many rugged smartwatches offer. You can go diving with this thing and it will still survive. It's stronger in its water resistance rating than the majority of other smart rings on the market. It feels quite robust. We have kind of the matte black version and after wearing it for around a month, I haven't really noticed too much scruffing or scratching on these sides, luckily. A couple of other top line specs include, again, automatic, 
heart rate tracking 24 seven that is taken approximately 2.5 minutes apart. The companion app is compatible with both iOS as well as Android. Here's a snapshot of the biometric sensors that they're using. So heart rate is claimed up to 98% accuracy and the sleeping time detection should be up to 99% accurate as well. So these have also been slightly improved. Honestly, accuracy was an area that I was concerned about before I tested generation one because I thought since your fingers will move around a lot more than your wrists for things like typing, perhaps things like step count is not going to be quite as realistic. But surprisingly, the optimization was quite good even on Gen 1. It was only around 5 to 10% apart from the most accurate trackers on the market. Definitely more than good enough to give you a general idea of how you're performing for something so small and light. And this just improves on that even more. Again, crafted out of titanium alloy. And more specifically, here's kind of a side-by-side -side between the Gen 1 as well as Gen 2 rings. What hasn't really changed though would be the aforementioned battery case, which has the same capacity and design across Gen 1 and 2. But as the saying goes, why fix what's not broken? The only subtle difference is since the rings are technically thinner, uh, the middle section on the original charging case is going to be a little bit more tough to fit the newer ring, since this thing is just even more compact. But the original generation ring, again being a little bit fatter, can still fit into the generation 2 case, as you can tell. And they're still magnetic, they stick on with these pogo contacts, taking really just an hour to fully juice up for around, again, a week or two of use. And otherwise, the battery case is crafted out of aluminum alloy as well, so it feels quite sturdy and robust, charges using standard type C there at the very top. I'll also mention that the magnetic pogo contacts used for charging I do think is a little bit more of an appropriate solution versus the Ultra Human Ring Air uses actually Qi conductive wireless charging coils. There are no kind of contact points at all. However, because of wireless charging, the Ultra Human Ring Air gets noticeably hot compared to the Rincon rings actually remain cool even as they're being charged. And because high heat exposure can degrade the lifespan of batteries, I have to say that I think the approach here just makes the long longevity feel a bit more optimistic. After around a year's use on generation 1, the battery life has impressively remained still very consistent compared to, again, some of those alternatives. Well, after a few months down the line, the battery is now roughly one day shorter than when it was completely new. This has held up quite well in longer term use, at least from a battery standpoint. Now here's also a side by side in practice between the Gen 1 and 2, so again thinner even, in addition to the thickness as well as reduced. And this point is even more exaggerated when we compare it with the equivalent sized Ultra Human Ring Air, which as you can tell is noticeably thicker. So the comfort, feeling almost invisible now, is definitely one of the more subtle highlights. You can still make out some of the details, such as the optical heart rate SBO2 and some of the other circuitry board, which gives it a pretty cool touch. And there are two divots here as well to provide you with some traction, and the SBO2 and heart rate sensor are supposed to be facing downwards as you're wearing it in a position like this, it stays in place quite well. One other remark is the SpO2 and heart rate monitoring will shine a red LED, and in really dark environments you can see maybe a little bit of light leaking out on the edges, but all in all it's not bad I would say, particularly because it's facing downwards, so you can't really notice it that much. And the ring can be worn on pretty much any finger, whether it's your index finger, your thumb. As long as it's facing down on the sensor part, it will work uh, without too many discrepancies. You can use your left or right hand. And now a closer look at the Rincon Companion app. It is a little bit on the lighter side compared to rivals like the aforementioned Aura, Ultra Human, but at least it's easy to understand and data syncs quickly once you open the app. And this includes if you're wearing the ring for multiple days, going for example a week or two, and you haven't synced the data over, there is sufficient memory on the ring to store that data and then save it over once you open the app later on. So you don't have to sync it every day either, although if you are trying to dump multiple days of data, it may take a little bit longer for it to get refreshed and synced. Perhaps the biggest changes now though would be something called a wellness score. The concept is familiar compared to other smartwatches and wearables we've talked about, but now there's a consolidated chart that tells you how you're doing in terms of sleep, activity, vitals. Compared to days where you might be missing the mark, it will say improvable, making it a little easier to understand at a quick glance compared to all the breakdown scores down below. We still have the usual metrics though like sleep, steps, heart rate, stress level, and then this time around there's now the sleep apnea monitoring tile down below. So if we tap on the tile you'll see a scale that tells you kind of your risk of sleep apnea from zero to being super severe and the number of abnormalities that it's detected 
detected during the night. So your SpO2, in addition to your heart rate, are all getting tracked and assessed. That being said, if you are using sleep apnea, there are two caveats. The first being that the battery life of the smart ring will definitely drop a little faster. Because now, instead of tracking your heart rate every 2.5 minutes, it's basically taking your measurements second per second, kind of like if you're performing an exercise or workout session. So it will be, again, just using up a bit more battery, around 10% in fact per night, if you are turning on sleep apnea, although I guess it doesn't matter quite as much, thankfully, on the Rincon Gen 2, since the battery case is already so good. At worst, you're still getting around six days or so of battery life, which is already better than many of the other rivals, even without this functionality. The second caveat, though, is your phone's battery will also be draining faster, because during the entire apnea session, the phone needs to be idle with Bluetooth turned on continuously to communicate with the ring in real time. So as you're sleeping, the phone is still talking with the ring, and that process in my testing drained the phone's power maybe about 5% more compared to if I turned everything completely off overnight. Specific number will vary based on your phone's battery health and capacity, but that is one of the slight cons, is again using up a bit more resources unlike the other 24-7 tracking, which can be completely untethered from the phone. And afterwards, just take about a minute or so for you to end the session and then to generate a report for it to evaluate whether you have a higher risk of sleep apnea or not. And you can also enter some qualitative metrics like how well you are feeling during sleep as well that gets saved onto the report. So fundamentally, it's working the same way as the newest gen Apple Watch using similar sensors and techniques, but you can now do this on an even smaller wearable. I also tried giving the ring to a family member that does suffer from some higher risk of potential sleep apnea, and that was also reflected accordingly in their score. So surprisingly not bad, and seems to be a metric that is working well enough, I would say, for something so small. Now, the other metrics that we touched on, including regular sleep tracking, continues to perform well and gives you a sleep quality report based on hours of sleep as well as your time in bed, in addition to your sleep efficiency, and even stages of sleep, including wake, REM, light sleep, deep sleep, as well as whether you're within the normal zone or not. Although information is still mostly presented within just charts as well as numbers, at least they are still quite easy to interpret, and not bad, surprisingly, for a overall accuracy. It even tracks naps automatically that you take during the day as well. Here's one such example, and I have found that to be pretty decent when it comes to not having quite as much false positives or false negatives as some of the other rings. In particular, the Ultra Human Ring Air's nap detection does tend to be on the more sensitive side. Oftentimes when I'm just sitting in front of my computer and working, sitting still, the Ultra Human Ring Air would think I've fallen asleep and taken a nap, which you can then click on yes or no to confirm. Versus on the Rincon, I have had zero of those instances. So the health metric data coming from Rincon has always been one of the better ones, I'd say, out of the smart rings I've tested, and that remains true on the second generation model. By the way, there is also a skin temperature sensor in here as well, so if your numbers are too high, it can detect if you're having a fever, for instance. Other metrics like step counting, aka the pedometer, are also doing a fair enough job. The score here is from 0 to 100, and it's reflected based on certain metrics, like whether you're reaching your daily step goal, as well as how many hours from the day you've been standing up, and how much time you've been spending in more moderate high intensity intensity activities, really making the calibration of the motion sensors more accurate so it knows smaller movements like your wrist. Tapping the table or shaking is not going to result in a step being counted. So the numbers here have actually been really not bad, surprisingly, for a smart ring, and you can see your activity interval, again further broken down by some quick charts, so on and so forth. So you get the idea. They have been making some incremental improvements, uh, even though it's still on the more light side. At least you now get a few more breakdowns, showing some comparison comparisons day over day as well as over the entire week. And really speaking of incremental improvements, this continues to be true because Rincon is promising in their version 3.0 of their app that will be available over the air as an update. There will be a quote-unquote AI virtual coach for exercise that's getting added, so only time will reveal whether that's a practical feature or not, but I am assuming it's going to be similar to what Amazfit aka Zep has on their app as well, possibly providing you some more curated recommendations when it comes to how to reach your exercise activity goals, maybe even guiding you through some sample exercises or gym courses, for example. So the point is, although it's not the most exhaustive app in the world, they are still trying to add 
new features gradually in subsequent updates. In fact, in the current version of the app, you can already start to track some light exercises. It's in beta mode, but for simple things like running or cycling or walking, it'll also turn on the second per second tracking of your heart rate and step count to be even more accurate, and then saving it as a session for you to review, just like on smartwatches. This was a mode that was missing when Gen 1 first launched, so it's another incremental improvement. And you'll also see some occasional messages on the very top telling you if you completed certain kind of goals or stages as a playful way to try and get you to continue wearing the ring, providing with a few more customized recommendations as well as suggestions as you're using it, and also some AI-generated reports uh, that you can also check out under trends, such as your recent seven-day averages, and again, using some of the AI behind the scenes, it'll be looking at those data and trends and then writing it up in a mock report. It's kind of funny because it almost feels like they're using something like a chat GPT perhaps, but in a way I guess it's also what we've been asking for, more personalized insights of how you can act on the data points that it just presents you with. So anyways it tells you during this duration how our average is compared versus the previous week and a few bullet points of how we can consider to improve uh, such as on our sleeping habits, so on and so forth. It's actually not a bad kind of AI generated report based on your trends and you can even find a year in review recap as well. You have to click on you've agreed to the privacy statement, tap on generate. It's going to take a split second and then also tell you uh, kind of how your averages as well as larger trends compared over time. Finally, under the Me tab, this is where you can check out if the ring is connected, the battery percentage remaining, and an estimated number of days it can last. Tapping inside, you can even activate an airplane mode for the ring, turning off Bluetooth, and that will prolong the battery life even more. It will turn the Bluetooth back on when you place it back into the charging case and remove it. Data in the RingCon app can also be exported to Google Fit if you prefer for consolidating. Plus, under more advanced options, you can set your goal in terms of steps as well as sleep, including alerts for if you've been sitting too long, sedentary reminder, and also heart rate. If it's over a certain threshold, it will also warn you in the form of a notification in the app, since of course the ring itself doesn't have a display like a smartwatch, uh, so you aren't able to read notifications. It also doesn't have a haptic vibration motor either, which is kind of expected because the battery is so small. So in conclusion, the smart app itself I think presents you with a good enough UI for, again, tracking your metrics and trends over time, and they're trying to improve by adding some of those AI features for evaluating your trends, giving you a couple more insights, along with that sleep apnea detection available for Gen 2. So there we have it. That's been just a closer look at the RingCon Gen 2, and all things considered, if all you need is basic fitness tracking, kind of 24-7, in a way that is super comfortable and lightweight, I do think this is going to be a really strong contender. Battery life, comfort of it being the thin and lightest smart ring in addition to surprisingly not bad accuracy in the smart ring category are all areas where I would say this definitely shines. Granted, a smart ring is still not going to be for everyone. Unlike a smartwatch, you obviously aren't able to tell the time nor receive notifications, but if you do find a smartwatch to be just a little bit too bulky or intrusive for things like sleeping, that's where this product category might be interesting, or you can wear an analog classic style watch that looks business professional paired with something like this for the other health metrics. Now, if you are a current Gen 1 Ring owner, I would say upgrading might be a more difficult question. Honestly, if your current Ring still performs well, so you can probably still hang on to your current generation Ring until a next gen model comes along and we might see even bigger improvements. But for folks that have been holding off completely, this might be an even better point of entry that feels more polished than ever. You can check out more details if interested in the links down below. For now, it's been our video. That has been the Ring Con Gen 2 Smart Ring.